I suppose, I, I imagine they could be the hard pangs. Get up there. Shoot him! There we go. There's another example of the on-screen GUI not all, always quite responding to my input. Happens occasionally. Anti-matter samples. Ooh, what's this? Oh, those look cool. I want this one. I want this one. It's got a scope on it, and I want this one, too. I bet this one shoots really fast, and this one hits really hard. I want this one. It's got a scope on it. I wonder what the scope does. I wonder if it gives, gives it critical hits or something. Maybe it's like the Eagle from Resident Evil 3. It fires really fast, and it occasionally blows the heads off of things. Ah! Oh, I want... I want that! I want both of these things! Damn it! And this one just looks like a gun. <laughs> this doesn't even look like an energy weapon. This just looks like a gun. It's like, you know... Like, although the TR-116 is a ballist, is a kinetic weapon. It's a ballistic weapon. Uh, it, it fires a shell. It doesn't actually fire an energy shot. It fires a solid shell at the Borg. That's why it w that's why it was invented. Oh, well, actually, it was invented to, to fight the Dominion. But I imagine I, I find it. I I don't quite understand why it was never distributed, considering the fact that the Borg keep showing up. And that, like, Voyager dealt with the Borg, and they made contact with Starfleet, and I find it hard to hard to believe that they didn't actually, like, send them the schematics of this kinetic weapon that the Borg would have trouble adapting to, because it didn't use any kind of energy other than kinetic force. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of hard for the Borg to adapt to be, to adapt to uh, being hit by something at the velocity that the weapon fires something. And there's also the fact that it has this little, like, transporter, mini transporter at the very end of the barrel that can beam the bullet into, you know, through a wall, into another room, so you don't even have to be in the same room as the person you're shooting at in order to kill them. And somehow the Federation was losing the Dominion War for a while. But yeah, I, w I would imagine that there are probably a fair amount of kinetic weapons in the 25th century, now that we're dealing so much with the Borg. In fact, I would like to see, I would like to see a Starfleet issued, like, not, like, not just the TR, uh, not just the TR-116, but, like, in the books you have the TR-117. You know, they introduce they introduce a new Starfleet assault rifle that is called the TR-117, and it is a assault rifle. You know, it is a fully automatic kinetic weapon. It fires shells, it fires ammunition, and they developed it specifically to help them take on the Borg, so that they can actually fight the Borg on an even footing on the ground without, you know, risking the Borg adapting to all of their weapons. And you see this a lot in the Star Trek Destiny books, and I know a lot of people don't really look too maybe not a lot of people, but a very vocal group of people uh, don't look too... Hello, Namo. Don't look... Let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. Uh, don't look too fondly on the Destiny series. I personally enjoyed it. 
I sure as hell enjoyed the Destiny series a lot more than I'm than the Typhon than the Typhon pack arc that's going on right now. It just oh, I read Zero Sum Game and. I had to force myself to finish Zero Sum Game. It was really just... But getting back to the concept of kinetic weapons in Star Trek, they introduced kinetic weapons purely because the Borg keep showing up. And Starfleet wants something to use to allow them to be able to fight the Borg and win. Because, like, if you ever go and watch Star Trek First Contact, for the majority of the movie... They're getting their asses handed to them by the Borg. Like, it's barely... It's not even a fair fight. It's literally... They go to face the Borg, the Borg adapt to all their weapons, and then literally just fucking curb stomp whatever teams they send to fight them. They get their butts handed to them in that movie. So, why wouldn't Starfleet develop kinetic weapons to take the Borg on with? You know, it seems like a no-brainer. You know, it all it, it's always been one of those things where it's just like, hello, you know, you have replicators, just make a 9mm and pow, you know, just replicate a 45, you know, and you can solve a lot of problems with the Borg that way. It's been one of those things that has sort of ling been one of the lingering sort of things about Star Trek for a long time for me. It's just... And they even do it in the movies. In the movie I just mentioned, First Contact, Picard even does it. He goes to the holodeck, he makes a holographic Tommy gun, and he guns down the Borg with it. And it's like, why aren't we already doing this? You know? It's like, we, we know they adapt to your energy weapons. You know, we're kind of overthinking this. We have the technology to take them on. It's a little primitive, but it works. Under... Although... And, I'm gonna, and now this is the other side of this discussion. The Borg adapt to everything. That sort of becomes super, like, to the point of ridiculousness, really. Like, some kind of, like, super, like, they're... In recent Trek, the Borg are either presented as some kind of super invincible threat, adapting to everything that gets thrown at them, like, un completely unstoppable force. Or they are pathetic. Vo like, from throughout most of Voyager, the Borg were pathetic. Like, even at the end of Voyager, the Borg were pretty bad. You know, they were they had slid pretty far from where they had been before. Oh, God. So, one, one would imagine that the Borg could eventually find some way... Uh, some way to counter the use of kinetic weapons against them, but still, you know, why aren't we doing that? You know, why 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 aren't there kinetic weapons? And that looks like a kinetic weapon. That doesn't have like any of the bright shiny things on it that any like the phasers do. That looks like a gun. That just looks like a handgun. And you know, what? I can totally see the Klingon Empire going that route. These are the people who are still using swords and knives. You know, like, not, not even just for close combat. Exclusively, swords and knives. They carry them everywhere. You know, I can see Klingons, u like, manufacturing kinetic weapons to fight Borg with. I can see that. You know, I, I can totally see the Klingons doing that, which is, again, which is why it mystifies me why we don't see any of those in this time period where the Borg have apparently invaded and intend to kill everyone. Ugh. I'm done. Captain, ship scanners indicate a computer core in your vicinity. You should upload its contents to the Waglinde. It may give us insight into how the Klingons are planning to use these weapons. We may even find hints of the Vat's ultimate plan. Alrighty. Let's make sure you got the firewalls up. A little nitpick, but I would have liked a little line of dialogue from the player character there saying, Alright, firewall a computer and isolate it from the rest of the ship, because there could be anything on this. If I were the Klingons, I would put a computer virus in this, and anybody who tried to steal the data would immediately get hit by it. Ooh, something's shining over there.
I mean, this is a secret base, so anybody who, anybody who's coming here I, is not, you know, who I don't know is coming here is somebody I don't want here anyway, so, you know, why not put a virus in this thing? Screw them. But, we're going to assume... <sighs> but, we're going to assume that... But, we're going to assume that Locke has somehow firewalled the... Okay, that's it, Prank. Get the fuck down from there. Get down from there! We're going to as proceed on the assumption that Locke has isolated a computer from the rest of the Waglinde's computer network and firewalled it. So, let's go ahead and check out what's in this computer core. Oh, shite. Damn targs. That was it? beans. Data uploaded. Captain, there's a message coming through the comm. Linking it to you now. <laughs> Vice Admiral, you are so predictable. And like a Tarkalian sheep, you were blindly led to the slaughter. I knew you would find my weapon research station. I sent Marta to give you its location. Now that I have you just where I want you, I've closed the blast doors and triggered the base's self-destruct mechanism. You're trapped. Even now, my ships are escaping with the weapons and data we cared to save from your Federation meddling. It is a good day for you to die, Vice Admiral. So, wait, 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 wait. Your plan was to lead me to the facility where you are manufacturing all of your weapons so that I could destroy it. So, your plan was to lead me to the place where you're manufacturing all of your most powerful weapons so I could destroy it. So your plan was to lead me here into your secret hidden base, discover it, so that I could kill your men and destroy your facility. I... So your plan was to lure me to your secret hidden base so I could kill all of your people. Gather your computer, your top secret information, destroy your secret facility. Your plan was for me to destroy your... Fuck, I don't, I don't know, whatever. God. That's not physically possible. Uh, I could throw this triple away. Kersey, take care of this triple. There we go. This place is about to blow up. I don't want to leave the triple here. I can get rid of it later. I do not condone cruelty to triples. That, and I'm looking at you, all the, all the people who. I escape. Okay, Captain, we are out of the range of the base's transport inhibitors. We should be able to beam up from here. 
I do not condone cruelty against Tribbles, and that goes out to all of you who stick your Tribbles in the replicator after you find them. Return to ship. Namo's gonna stay behind for a moment to make sure everybody gets away safe, because he's an awesome dude like that. And then we're going to be stuck loading, and loading, and loading. Donut! Continue the battle cruiser. So sensors indicate that several Klingon ships are attempting to escape the system. They appear to be trying to use the asteroid belt to mask their warp core signatures. If we hurry, we should be able to intercept them. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use deuterium surplus and evasive maneuvers. Okay, I thought it was several Klingon ships. Apparently it was only one. Hang on now. Okay, now. Excellent work. Thank you? You're my first officer. You're supposed to be contrary to me, right? That's sort of why they... Never mind. But that won't be getting his hands on those experimental weapons. Have we transmitted the data from the computer core to Starfleet Intelligence? No? What is it? What happened while I was gone? You're a bit too... You're, that was a bit too courteous. I want to know what was going on while I was down there. Alright. Let's see. Salvage dispute. Salvage dispute is useless. Let's see. Secret orders. Hail Starfleet. That was a close one, Vice Admiral. It's a testament to your academy training that y you and your crew survived. That you and you crew survived. <laughs> it's a testament to your academy training that you and you crew survived. You and your crew, damn it. Um, let's see. I'm sorry, it just, that just messed me up. It says you and you crew. Gr grammar! So let's, okay, let's go ahead and get the Disruptor Beam Array. And that was Secret Orders. Let's see, let's go ahead and get rid of the Disruptor Beam Array. And, uh... Where am I at right now? Ow, sorry. So where am I at? Let's see. Capture files at 16 gigabytes right now. So I think I'm going to render that off, and then I will record the next... Uh, mission, which is going to be the ultimate Klingon. So, yeah, go ahead and render all, all that, and while that's rendering, I can go ahead and make myself dinner, because I haven't eaten all day. And I will see you guys later, so later.